outside in the water bath. Now, I, have, I imagine some mechanism. So this is a salt solution, that's a salt solution. And I imagine some mechanism by which it, the salt can diffuse. It's a diffusion model now. Diffuse from here into there or possibly out the other way. And that's usually done by vaguely referring to uh, that the outside is a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable so that the salt will have a little hard time getting through, uh, but permeable so that it won't be blocked completely. So there's a membrane. Uh, uh, you write the semi-permeable <laughs> membrane outside. Outside the inside. <laughs> well, I give up. <laughs> Out you know, not membrane somewhere. Sorry. <laughs> membrane wall. How's that? Now, what's the equation? Well, the equation's the same, except it's called the diffusion equation. I don't think Newton got his name on this. Uh, the diffusion equation says that the rate at which the salt diffuses across the membrane, which is the same up to a constant as the rate at which the concentration inside changes, is some constant, uh, usually called k still. OK. Do I contradict? My, yeah, OK. Let's keep calling it k1. <laughs> now it's different. Times ce minus c. And for the same reason as before, if the external concentration is bigger than the internal concentration, we expect salt to flow in. That will make C rise. It will make this positive, And therefore, we want K to be positive, just K1 to be positive for the same reason it had to be positive before. So in each case, the model that I'm talking about is the differential, is the differential equation. So maybe I should, uh, let's put that, make that clear. Or I would say that this first order differential equation models this physical situation. And the same thing is true on the other side over here. This is the diffusion equation. And this is the conduction equation. Now, if you were in any doubt about the power of differential equations, the point is, when I talk about this thing, I don't have to say which of these I'm following. I'll use neutral variables like y and x to solve these equations. But clearly, I'm with a single stroke, I will be handling both situations together. And that's the power of the method. Now, you obviously must be wondering, look, uh, hey, these look very, very special. He said he was going to talk about the first general first order equation, but these look rather special to me. Well, not too special. How shall we write it? Suppose I write, I'll write it the, let's take the temperature equation just to uh, have something definite. Notice that it's in a form corresponding to Newton's law, but it is not in the standard linear form. Let's put it in standard linear form. So at least you can see that it's a linear equation. So if I put it in standard form, it's going to look like dt dt, d little t, plus kt is equal to k times te. Now compare that with the general, the way the general equation is supposed to look, that yellow box over there, the standard linear form. How are they going to compare? Well. This is a pretty general function. This is general. This is a general function of t because, you know, I can make the external temperature. I can suppose it behaves in any way I like, steadily rising, decaying exponentially, maybe oscillating back and forth for some reason. The only way in which it's not general is that this k is a constant. So I will ask you to be generous. If, let's imagine the conductivity is changing over time. So this is usually constant, but there's no law which says it has to be. How could a conductivity change over time? Well, uh, we could suppose, for example, that uh, uh, we could suppose that this wall was made of slowly congealing jello, for instance. Uh, 
you know, it starts out as liquid, then it gets solid, and uh, Jello, Jello doesn't transmit heat, uh, I believe, quite as well as as uh, liquid does, as a liquid would. Is Jello a solid or a liquid? I don't know that. So. <laughs> Let's forget about that. <laughs> So with this understanding, but so let's say not necessarily here, but not necessarily, uh, I can think of this, therefore, by allowing K to vary with time and the external temperature to vary with time, I can think of it as a general linear equation. So these models are not special, they're fairly general. Well, I did promise you I would solve an equation, and in this lecture I still have not solved any equations. Okay, time to stop temporizing and solve. So I'm going to, in order not to play favorites with these two models, I'll go back to, and to get you used to thinking of new variables all the time, that is, you know, uh, being eclectic, switching from one variable to another, according to which a particular lecture you happen to be, to be sitting in, so let's take our equation in the form y prime plus p of x y, the general form, using the old variables equals q of x. Solve me. Hmm. Well, there are different ways of describing the solution process. No matter how you do it, it amounts to the same amount of work. And there's always a trick involved in each one of them, since you can't suppress a trick by doing the problem some other way. Uh, the way I'm going to do it, I think, is the best. That's why I'm giving it to you. It leads to, it's the easiest to remember, it leads to the least work. But I have colleagues who would fight with me on that point. So since they're not here to fight with me, I, I am free to do whatever I like. The, one of the main reasons is that uh, of doing it the way I'm going to do is because I want you to get one more word into your conscience, uh, cons consciousness, and that's the word, two words, integrating factor. I'm going to solve this equation by finding an integrating factor of the form u of x. What's an integrating factor? Well, I'll show you, uh, not by writing an elaborate definition on the board, but showing you what its function is. It's a certain function u of x, I don't know what it is, but here's what I want it to do. I want to multiply, I'm going to drop the x's uh, just so that the thing looks less complicated. So what I want to do is multiply this equation through by u of x, that's why it's called a factor, because you're going to multiply everything through by it. So it's going to look like uy prime plus puy equals qu. 